Hi cuties! Today I'm doing a what I eat in a day easy Korean recipe edition. Yeah! If you've been on this channel, you know I've been cooking a lot of Korean food. I love the spiciness, I love the freshness, and so many recipes are easy to make, yet they are so dang flavorful. I hope this video gives you ideas on how you can incorporate some of these meals into your everyday life. And if you're intimidated by cooking, don't worry. A lot of these recipes are just you toss in the ingredients, and as long as it tastes good to you, that's what matters. That's really what matters. If you love this channel and want to support it, you can now give thanks below. You can also become a channel member and get an exclusive badge and exclusive updates. Okay, let's get cooking! So for breakfast, we're making a Korean comfort food. It's called kerambap. It is egg rice, literally translates to egg rice. It includes a lot of the ingredients that you may already have in your fridge or your pantry. Everyone has different ways for how they make this, but here's mine. Let's get started! <laughs> Fry your eggs, you guys can use oil or I like to use butter. It just adds a little bit more like savoriness to it. So I'm going to drop some butter on there. Once the butter has a bit more color to it, we're gonna crack two eggs. One, two, and we're just gonna let that fry. Is this gonna blow up or something? <laughs> As I'm getting, I used the new portable. Oh, it's gone. I'm gonna cover a little bit to steam the top. It smells so good already. There we go. Made some fresh rice. We're gonna be using this rice later, so it's nice that you know you make a batch in the morning. The fresh rice, you're gonna go ahead and plop your egg on top of it like that. <laughs> Nice. Gonna add a little bit of soy sauce. Drizzle a little sesame oil. Usually you can do about a tablespoon of each. Fresh green onions, sesame seeds. This is very important. You guys want seaweed? Okay. These are like the seaweed packs you can get at any Asian market. And then you're basically going to crush it up and then put it on your bowl. An easy way if you don't want to get your hands all seaweedy, if that's even a word, um, you can just put it into a Ziploc bag like this and you can just kind of Push it up like that. Top it onto your... Here. Your egg rice breakfast is done. Now you can honestly eat this for lunch, snack, dinner, midnight snack. It's kind of a meal that you can go to anytime. You get the egg, you get the seaweed, you get that soy sauce on the rice and sesame oil. Ready? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So easy, so flavorful. I probably popped some kimchi in there too. I wanna say for those of you who don't want to use too much soy sauce, um, you guys can add some rice seasoning onto here. That was a lot. <laughs> rice seasoning is gonna add an extra layer of flavor. Really, egg rice, you can customize it however you want. It's so, so dang good. Mm, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. So one way I get my veggies in is by making Korean side dishes or panchan. They are a great way to add freshness and colors to your meals, and they are great to eat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Of course, I've posted a bunch of recipes on shorts already, but here's an extra one I haven't made before that is just as delicious. It's an easy dish, it tastes great, and it gets you to eat your broccoli. Starting with a fresh crown of broccoli. This is like a really quick and lazy way to cut the broccoli. <laughs> you just kind of go in a circle like this. <laughs> You actually want to make sure that they are similar in sizes. So this one's kind of big. You can go ahead and... So if you don't have a steamer like me, I just have a bamboo steamer. You can actually steam your broccoli in the pan. It's really simple. So you're gonna dump everything in. You're going to add some water. It's probably about two third cup of water. Once the water is boiling, we're going to cover it and just let it steam the broccoli. I'm actually going to turn off the heat and just let it steam for about five minutes. It is about five minutes. Lift this up. It's gonna let all of that water evaporate. To dress the broccoli, I'm using olive oil here. Olive oil has a lot of great benefits. It's brain powering, it's energizing, and it builds your immunity. It's also great for your hair, your skin, and your eyes. I will be using Brightland's olive oil, today's video sponsor, which I think you'll really, really love. Brightland is a high quality olive oil. It's made with 100% olives. It's female founded, and they source their olives from a family-run California farm. So many 
cheaper oils are actually mixed with lower quality oils or rancid oils to cut costs. But with Brightland, you're getting the most authentic olive oils and vinegars that are never rotten or over processed. So when you use Brightland, rest assured what you're putting to your body is straight from earth. This one is Alive. It's their smooth and grassy extra virgin olive oil cold press. It's nutty, it's perfect for greens, salads, and dips. Look at that olive oil coating it. So incredibly fresh. That olive oil just brings us to another level with the crunchy broccoli. Brightland has some truly delicious products available. I personally can't wait to try their orange blossom and wildflower honey. They're offering you 10% off when you click the link in my description because you deserve to drizzle the best of the best. It's 10% off using the link in my description. Yeah. This is how you get yourself to eat more broccoli. All right, so it is lunchtime and today we are making kimbap. Now, I only make this when I have more time or it's the weekend or I just feel like treating myself because the prep takes a little bit longer than most recipes. However, it is so good, it's so delicious. It's like one of my favorite Korean food ever. So let's get started. Same thing when you're making sushi rice, you wanna make sure you season the rice. But for kimbap, you're actually gonna put some sesame oil in and some salt. And you wanna do it when it's fresh and warm. That way all of that stuff dissolves in there. You're gonna set the rice aside and let it cool down and then prepare the other ingredients. So I'm gonna put about two handfuls of spinach into boiling water. It's gonna blanch it for about 30 seconds. Two handfuls. I'm going to take the spinach out. I'm going to rinse it under cold water to stop it from cooking. So I make sure it's got a nice crisp. Once you guys rinse this, just make sure you kind of squeeze out the water over the sink. So I'm only making this for one, but if you're making it for a lot of people, you can throw in a, like two more handfuls. They just ripple up. A little bit of sesame oil on top of that, some salt, and then fresh garlic. This is also how you would make um, like a spinach panchan. Okay, carrots, same thing. I'm just gonna do about a handful. You should probably measure it if you really want to, but <laughs> Okay, handful. Um, usually with carrots, you can put some salt on it, let it sweat it out, but I'm lazy. I'm going to saute this and then put it on the side with the spinach. Eggs, you're gonna use three eggs. Crack them, put some salt in them, fry them, sit them aside, the slice them in pieces. So for my kimbap, I am using Spam. I love the savoriness, it adds to the entire bite, but you can absolutely use beef or you can use crab meat, or you can just not use it entirely and just keep it like a veggie uh, kimbap. Ah, I'm just going to just like, just, oh, there it is. <laughs> Filets, like I'm making some Spam masubi. And then I'm gonna save the rest because I can make Spam and eggs in the morning for like another breakfast. I'm also adding pickled radish. You can get this at the Asian grocery store. They already come pre-cut like that in strips. Last but not least, I'm gonna add Korean fish cake. They usually come frozen in the pack in the grocery store. So you have to go into the fridge section, open it up. You'll see like four sheets of frozen fish cake in a little pack, and that's what you get. These are leftover from other recipes in the past. This is what they look like. Even if yours is frozen, all you have to do is run it under cold water. So I'm actually going to stir fry this a little bit with some soy sauce, sesame oil, and sugar. You don't have to do that because really you're eating it for the texture, but I like just a little bit more flavor. It's time to pull out your nori sheets. There we go with this fine man. Oh! And we're gonna use one sheet of this. Set it down onto a rolling mat. You're going to get a little bit of rice. Lay it out. You wanna leave a little bit of space here so that you can properly roll it up. Nice! I love the colors. I wanna trip right here. You're going to... Hoi! Roll and squeeze, ladies and gentlemen. So you can put a little bit of water here. It's gonna help it stick. And there we go. Look at that. Da -da! 
let's slice into it, shall we? With the amount of ingredients that we use, you can usually get about four to five of these rolls. I used about two cups of rice, but some of the rice I also used for breakfast. So all the rice is gone, most of the ingredients is gone. What's left is like spam and the pickled radish and just like two slices of fish cakes. But all of the veggies are gone. So the final step for this is you wanna brush on some oil for that final sparkle. Okay, okay. Once you brush on some sesame oil, it is time to cut into it. You wanna make sure that the rice is already cool because if you try to cut into it when the rice is warm, it's going to make it very difficult. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Look at those. Mm. Lunch is served, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mm. When you make kimbap, you wanna make sure you eat it the day of, but let's say you have leftovers, like I'm going to have, because I made quite a lot today. Once you put it in your fridge, the rice does get all hard, but what you can do is actually, you take out the kimbap from the fridge, you're going to coat it in egg, and then put it on your pan. The egg is going to moisten and soften the rice, and it's gonna taste delicious. It's gonna be like a little kimbap pancake. Yes. <laughs> oh, good. Guys, I promise you this really was breakfast, lunch, and dinner because I started filming this at like 10 or 11 and it is, it is six o'clock. So this particular dish, I love making this. This is kind of my go-to meal. It's simple to put together and it is kimchi tofu soup. Now it's not like a traditional recipe because then you'll cook it into a earthenware. This is my version kimchi tofu soup. I usually just toss in whatever I have left in my fridge. It's easier to put together and I make a giant pot. Ooh, okay, that's fine, that's actually great. Great, so some sesame oil in. We are going to toss in garlic. Gosh, I love garlic and ginger. Here we go. I'm gonna toss in some kimchi now. It's gonna bring out more of that beautiful kimchi flavor, but you can always put it after the broth. It's honestly up to you. I just like doing it this way. So I have some leftover zucchinis that I have in the fridge from making panchan. Uh, zucchinis, you can usually toss into the soup after, or I kind of like to stir fry all together with the kimchi. I'm doing all this on low heat. Mm, I wish you guys can smell this. Traditional kimchi tofu soup or any kind of tofu soup or any kind of Korean soup, they like to use anchovy broth. Now you can make anchovy broth from scratch. I have a recipe for it. It is actually very simple. But for most of you, you probably don't have those ingredients at home. So you can use chicken broth, which is what I have here. Let's say things are softening. There's a little bit of browning on the kimchi. I'm gonna go ahead, lower the heat even more and I'm gonna pour in the chicken broth. One particular thing I love about this dish and why I like to have it for dinner is because you can throw in a lot of leftover vegetables that you have in your fridge. This is especially good for end of the week when you have like leftover mushrooms, leftover daikon, or just random veggies sitting in your fridge. You can toss it all into this soup. So right now I'm gonna to toss in some mushrooms and I'm just gonna wait till it boils. Okay, I'm gonna add in some gochujang, which is Korean pepper paste. Da! If you are uh, somebody who can't handle a lot of spice, you can just put a little tablespoon in and it's gonna add already a lot of flavor. So I'm gonna use about like this much, like a tablespoon, even tinier than a tablespoon. And I'm just going to mix it into the broth. As you are boiling the soup, you're gonna notice these things on top. It's kind of like the little gummy, the little foam. I like to scoop it out for your kimchi tofu soup. You're gonna want to use silken or soft tofu. Open it up, pour out all the water, and I'm just going to slice this up into little cakes. Let's say you guys use low sodium chicken broth or use some type of broth where there's not a lot of flavor. You can add a little bit of soy sauce in here, but then once again, with the kimchi, with the chicken broth you're using, and with the gochujang, you should have enough flavor. Like, it's so flavorful right now. Just going to let it stew in there for a few more minutes. I'm just going to mix it a little bit. I'm really waiting for it to boil up again with the tofu. It's 
smells amazing. Here we go. And... Oh, bish. That is good. <laughs> so the wonderful thing about all of these recipes is that you can obviously kind of pair it with each meal. So we had some leftover broccoli salad, we had some leftover kimbap that we heat up by adding some egg, and now it's like a full delicious meal for dinner. So it's just so cozy and warm, and of course, you're gonna have lots of leftover kimchi tofu soup for the next day. There you guys go! That is what I eat in a day, Korean recipes! Thank you, thank you. I almost forgot. Here's a bite for you guys. Ah, uh, okay, that was a full day of cooking. Now, realistically, not every single day looks like this. This is like a curated menu, so these are recipes that you guys can also try at home. You don't have to make them all in one day, but I hope it inspires you to cook at home and gives you a lot of easy meal ideas. Let me know in the comments below which of the recipes we made today would you like to try, and give this video a big thumbs up. If you guys want to support this channel, you can now become a channel member and get an exclusive badge and exclusive up dates or you can give thanks right here. I am absolutely full and so darn tired and I gotta clean my kitchen. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!